Hey, welcome to the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. We're going to talk about NTP client and server mode on the ICX series platform this time around. So from our 7250 here, uh, we're going to config mode and then uh, we're going to go into NTP, which will put us into NTP sub mode. Um, so I should point out that um, in previous versions, we could we did SNTP and not NTP. Now you have the option of doing both, but you can't do both at the same time. So generally NTP has replaced SNTP. Um, and so you should be running as uh, NTP. And so if you try to go into NTP and configure it uh, while you're running SNTP, it's going to give you an error message and, and tell you to uh, remove that before you continue on. But anyway, so we're good now. Um, so under the NTP sub mode here, we have several things. We could do authentication and set an authentication key. Uh, we can do master mode. We could do NTP interfaces. We can uh, do source interfaces. So multiple things we can do in here. But what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do is set a server. So um, we're going to set it to a server out on the Internet. So we'll do a server uh, 96.126.1. 22.39 um, and then I'm just going to set a second one so server 4.2.2.2 okay so really that's all I need to do to go into server mode um, and so or uh, sorry to go into client mode and that turns on server in the meantime so if we do a show NTP status here it tells us that the clocks are unsynchronized, so it hasn't synchronized to a client yet, and I don't have a reference clock. Um, NTP server mode is enabled. Uh, NTP client mode is enabled. So as soon as I enabled this server up here or added a single server, that puts me into client mode, but it also puts me into server mode. Um, so if I want to just be a client and not be a server, then I can configure that with a disabled server. We'll see that in just one second. So actually, if I wanted to do that, I would say disable serve. And then if I go back and look at my status here, right? So now server mode is disabled, but client mode is still enabled. So I'm going to take that back off. No disable serve. OK. Um, so I can look at my status. It does take a few minutes to update that. The other thing we could do is, uh, in the meantime, we could do a show NTP association. And it shows me who I'm associated with, right? So here's my clock uh, 39. Here's his reference clock. He's stratum 2. This guy's stratum 3. And it's telling you um, whether that they're configured, right? But as of yet, uh, neither one of these is synchronized. So it takes a minute to be synchronized. Um, and they're still not synchronized, so that takes a minute. But it's it's talking to those reference clocks for or to to those things, right? And it shows you who their reference clock is. So um, as far as stratum goes, this the stratum um, number is what is basically more trustworthy. So as close to the master clock as you can get. So a master atomic clock is considered, you know, a stratum zero, which really you can't talk to. So from an NTP perspective, that would be a stratum one. And then as you move away from that, you know, a stratum two talks to a stratum one, a stratum three talks to a stratum two. So as you move away from that stratum one, you get less accurate. I mean, we're, we're talking, you know, microseconds, but you do get less accurate the farther away. So the stratums will be prioritized by the lower stratum number because it's considered more accurate or you know more trustworthy um, and so there we go so we now have a synchronized clock so we're synchronized it's stratum three here's my reference clock um, uh, it gives you the precision if you want to know the reference time uh, the clock offset etc so uh, right, so I, I put myself back into server mode, so now other client machines can point to my address and synchronize their time off of me. Um, I can also be master mode, so in the event that all of my, uh, my reference clocks go away, I can become master for the network if I want to. Usually not uh, ideal, but, but that is possible. Um, what else can we see? If we do a show clock here... 
we now see that that here's my clock and by default right off of those off of those reference clocks out on the internet i'm going to get gmt right so um assuming you're not in gmt you can go ahead and set your uh your time zone so it's clock time zone um in this case you know you have multiple options here but we'll go us eastern in my particular case now if i show clock again now my clock is uh is accurate right so um, and depending on whether you're in daylight savings time or not you may need to set the summertime clock summertime parameter uh, or not so if i went clock summertime then it would put me into daylight savings time Okay, uh, so that's about it. Uh, pretty straightforward. You just set that server address. It puts you into client and server mode. If you want to turn off server mode, you do a no serve or a disable serve, I should say, uh, and then make sure you set your time zone so your time is accurate. And now if we look at our log file, for example, our log file is going to be accurate, right? So these times here that it, that's are not just how long since the box was was rebooted last these are actually accurate time so if you're trying to um if you're trying to synchronize an event between multiple switches and assuming you're not sending it to an external SNT, um, snmp server then you can look and these should be perfectly accurate among all your devices so you can correlate an event happening uh, across multiple devices all right that's it for today thanks for joining see you next time